Can you hear me? I can hear you and I can see you. How are you? Good, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. Thanks for, for being here. Thanks for your time as well. That's kids right. are, yeah, the kids are looking forward to hear from you. <laughs> I see a few MacArthur Bulls shirts going on in the, in the group. Of course, we got a lot of uh, my brother supporters, but the, the, the thing is, they crazy about it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's good. I'm, I'm glad they're good supporters. We need them. Yeah, and, and I've seen a lot of, of our players there, and they wait for you to come after the game, sign some jerseys. Actually, there is one of our kids that got a gift from you. Oh, really? Yeah, he got the, the hair bang from you last time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah do you remember him? No, I do. I do remember that one. Yeah, that. <laughs> so everyone say hello to Loki. Wave. Loki, how are you? Hi, Loki. Hi, Loki. Hi, Loki. Hi. Hello. Hi, Loki. Hi, Loki. Hi. Hi, Loki. Hi, Loki. Hello. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. And all well, kids, um, we're very, um, very grateful to have Lachlan Rose from Macarthur FC today. He is an unbelievable player, but also he's spending this time, yeah, uh, in such a difficult moment for everyone, which is the the lockdown. And our kids, lucky just to give you a little bit of context, uh, we're based on on at Narellan, Narellan Vale and also at um, North Ride. So most of our players are in the Camden area and as well in the Sydney FC area. So we got Makata FC supporters, Sydney FC supporters, most of them. Um, some Western Sydney Wanderers as well. Uh, and our kids are from seven years old the way to 15. Uh, they train one or twice per week with us, plus with the club and then games on the weekend. So these kids love football. They, they, they breathe football and they big supporters of, of, of you especially. So you got a big connection with them. So um, that's great. No, I'm glad. Yeah, um, lucky I'm from my, from my side, I'm Sergio. I'm the, the director of the academy. And I'm glad we can put this together for, for the kids and also for, for the parents to hear from you. Uh, we're going to do it nice and nice and quickly. you got things to do. We wanted to respect your time, of course, and, and, and just go through, through a couple of questions from us, from us and also from the kids. So my first question is, can you please tell us a little bit about your story, about well, how did you start about in football? Where did you start playing? Well, um, so obviously I started like a youngster, like all the other kids on the live stream. Um, I guess I was, I was a real tennis nut when I was back in the day because of my dad being a tennis coach. So I was playing tennis all the way up to the age of about 10. Um, I played in America for tennis as well. And then when I came back, I just decided to play football. And then, yeah, I started off with mates and then made some rep sides and then went from there, I suppose. But it wasn't an easy road to where I'm at now. It was a lot of hard work. Um, Purely because I wasn't naturally gifted with football. I was naturally gifted with tennis. Um, like there was times where like pretty much from a young age all the way up till my older age group, um, I was sort of a bit on the rails with when I was at clubs. Like I wasn't always your star player. I wasn't always getting selected. Um, I got told by a few people I would never make it. And um, I guess I'm here where I am now, I suppose. So look, this is a completely story we hear from, you know, most of the players say, oh, we've been naturally gifted. We are, I, I've been always good. And then talent take me here plus a little bit of hard work. But you were gifted to tennis. So you were a yeah. tennis player. Yeah, yeah, I was. Um, so it was interesting. And then I made the, the change. And then I guess, as I said, from 13s up until 18s, I never actually got selected to stay at the club I was at. I went from a few different clubs when I was a youngster because I never got um, never got signed back on again. So, yeah, it was an interesting road. But I guess for me, that personally helped me a lot because it just made me go, okay, you don't want me then. That's going to make me work harder to prove you wrong. So for me, it just, it just built up. And in the back of my head, I had all these people that not – like I sort of doubted me a bit that didn't think I was going to get there. And then 
I guess I used that as motivation to push me forward. I didn't really let anyone tell me I couldn't do it because at the end of the day, I tell myself if I can do it, it's not up to anyone else because I know where I can be at. I know how far I can push myself. So, yeah. So your dream, when, when you were a kid, what was your dream? To become a tennis player, right? Um, to be honest with you, I actually really always enjoyed watching football. Like, I always wanted to be a footballer. So I was like, I used to love going to games and stuff. I was just more playing tennis, I suppose. And then when I started playing, I was like, I actually love this. It was, it's an e Football wise, mentally, so much easier because you've got your teammates around you. Tennis is hard because it's you by yourself on a tennis court. So, like, when you go to football, it's like, okay, if you make a mistake, your teammates are going to go, all right, get your head up and make sure the next one. But with tennis, it's like, if you make a mistake, you've got to learn to build yourself back up to go, okay, I made a mistake. Let's focus on the next point. Because if you don't, you're just going to keep losing continuous points and by then the match is gone. Right. When, when you get in love with football, then when do you realize you wanted to be professional? When do you realize this is what I want to do and this is what I'm going to fight for? Um, I think from that young age, I was like, like all these young boys here, you watch players on TV and stuff and you're going... Wow, that would be cool to be playing in front of that many people. Um, I guess that's what really got me over the line and seeing, like, I don't know how, how it all worked. Like, to be able to say that I'm playing football for a living is, for me, it's like I'm doing something I love. So technically it's not even work. It's I'm enjoying this. You know what I mean? Obviously there is a lot of hard work, but when you love something so much, and I'm sure parents will agree, you, you're never working a day in your life. Um, you're actually enjoying it. You enjoy being out there, and especially being young, being able to get the opportunity I got. I'm so grateful for it. I know that I've got to keep working harder every single day because at the end of the day, like I'm not nowhere near where I know I can be, and I still got a long way to go. You know what I mean? I still make mistakes, but I've got to fix them. You know what I mean? Like I'm not your perfect player, but it just means I still got stuff to learn. So yeah. It's interesting how young people and young kids want to be professional and that's their dream just to make it. But after you make it, what's happening? Like after you make it, you have to set your bar a little bit higher and keep working for something else. Yeah, I think people go, oh, once you made it, it's over. It's actually not. To be honest with you, the hard work starts the moment you actually, the moment you actually make it. Um, and I found that that's what I learned was <clears throat> I was like, okay, I made it here, but the hard work is staying here. You know what I mean? You can, you can make it and go, oh yeah, I made it. But then staying here is the hardest part because if you don't keep working hard, you'll just drop off and then they'll go, okay, we'll just get the next person to come in. You know what I mean? Like who wants it more? So at the end of the day, it's like you may, you may be there, but you still got a long way to go. You know what I mean? It's, and I'm sure everyone, like you look at the professionals, like it's never over. Like they have one bad game. They've got to make sure they regroup because if they keep falling behind, Sooner or later, they don't make the match day squad. Then they've got to work all the way back up to make that squad again. So, uh, but at the end of the day, I still believe you've got to enjoy it as well. If you're not enjoying it, then there's no point playing because the whole reason you started playing as a kid was because you enjoyed the game. Um, and that's one big thing I always make sure of is I'm still having fun because the moment I'm not having fun, then I feel like, why am I playing this? So if that's why I try to tell all the young kids as well, especially is like, you still got to have fun no matter what. Even no matter what level you play at, you still got to enjoy it. Because if you don't enjoy it, then there's no point. You got to love it. And, and we can see when you play, you actually play with the ball. You actually enjoy it. You, you, you try things. You go against in the 1v1 against whoever defender you got in front. And you try. You're risky. And I think that's why we all like the way you play. Because you go against the player and you try your best. And even if it's a, you know, a fancy skill or if it's something simple, you try it and you go through. So that's, that's very good on you. And that's why these kids also connect with you. They like your style. So if, if you want to uh, please tell us a little bit of how was that process now in between your youth when you were from club to club, people telling you, you maybe not going to make it. And then you got into an MPL2 club um, from from MPL2 to, to A-League. There was a big jump. So how was that process um, in between getting there? Yeah, well, I was at um, Blacktown City under 20s. Um, and I was like to myself, I was like, look, I'm at the age where I did pack my bags and go to England. Um, 
start of I think last year. Oh, sorry. And yes, yeah, so I came back start of last year. So I went to mum and dad, like, look, mum, dad, like, you know, I'm going to give it a shot. So I flew to England by myself and um, just went over there and just went and tried. Um, just said, you know what, what do I have to lose? You know what I mean? Like, not saying kids do this at this age, you're still too young, so don't try it yet. But I was I was at the age where I was like, okay, like, I've got nothing to lose. I'm just going to go do it. So I did it. Um, and that was after my first season at Spartans. But I was at Blacktown City on the 20s before that, and I was like, I wanted first grade time, but I knew that the players in front of me, like, they were good players. You know what I mean? They were, that's, they were there for a reason. So I thought to myself, okay, where am I going to get an opportunity to play first grade time when I'm versing men? You know what I mean? I'm at the age of 19. I was still able to play 20s, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to drop down to MPL2, try to play against, get that physicality into me. So I dropped down, and to be fair, it's probably the best thing I ever did. Um, I felt like obviously it's when you start playing first grade in 20s there's a big difference um, obviously players are much smarter it's much quicker and especially with MPL2 it's different it's different league you know what I mean like these guys are going into tackles and they're not thinking about anything else but to break you you know what I mean that's just the way it is um, and so I had to learn and adapt to that game um, pretty quickly otherwise I was going to fall fall behind so yeah I did that and then that after that first season, I was like, you know, I'll go to England. So I went to England. I tried at Salford City, um, and that was tough. And then I went to Maidenhead, which is a conference league team, which was tough as well. Um, but because of COVID, I had to come back home. So I came back home, and I was just kept training hard, um, doing everything possible. And then just before the first game of the season, the Spartans, I broke my finger during the week at training, which I had to have surgery on. So for me, I was like, this is a stitch up. I've never broken a bone in my life and it's my finger and I have to get surgery on it, which I just, you don't see very often really, unless it's pointing the other way. So I had to get that done. And then I came back earlier than what the doctors wanted me to. Um, I didn't tell them. So I ended up strapping it up and I had like this big cast on my finger while I was playing. So it made you more of a target. And I came back and I was really confident because I was going off the confidence I had in pre-season and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, and that's when I just just went out there and just did everything possible. And then one day I got a phone call asking me to come into MacArthur. Um, it was mainly going in for NYL, which is a youth team, which I thought of. And then I got asked to go train with the A-League team. And when I got asked that, I was, like, shocked. Um, I was like from where I came from but I thought you know what like they see something to have me training with them so, so I trained with them and then it was a bit of a journey it was about three months I was training there for um, and I think a lot of people it's a, it was a real big mental game for me personally going like am I going to get signed am I not am I in this or am I in my like where do I sit like because it's Football is it's mental, you know what I mean? You want to see how tough these people are mentally. And, yeah, I just kept training, 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 trying to do everything possible at training. Um, and, yeah, and then before the Newcastle Jets game in Newcastle when we were playing a trial game, they offered me a contract and I was just beside myself. I was just going, like, wow. Like, I guess all the hard work's paid off, but... I know personally it never came easy for me, you know what I mean? I know some people go, oh, you're lucky and stuff. And deep down I know that the only reason why the coaches rewarded me with the contract is because I knew how hard I worked. Um, and they, they saw something and they believed in me. So they wouldn't just give me that if they didn't believe in me. So and I'm, that's why I'm so grateful for these coaches because, like, to take me under their wing to do that for me, it's just, for me personally, it's like, okay, now it's time to to prove to them that signing me was worth it. You know what I mean? From, yeah. Lucky, from that moment where you received the call uh, to go to Makata FC, or I think it was North Shore Marine, the NPL side, right? Yeah, it was, it was to go with Makata. It's like training with a few of the trialists. Um, so it was with Makata. But honestly, at first, I thought it was my mates calling me mucking around. Because um, a lot of my mates used to do that, like mucking around with me. But then I knew it was real once I heard the phone because I was like, oh, okay, this is real. This isn't my mate's. Like, <laughs> this is no joke. No, no joke here. <laughs>
<laughs> and then when you when you get to, to train with them, what did it change? Were you training at that, um, maybe not the same intensity, but the amount of training you were doing before A-League and during A-League, is it the same? How do you compare that um, MPL side to the A-League side? Um, obviously, there's a big difference. Um, like with anything, like there's always, like you look at England especially, like you've got the difference between the Premier League and obviously like League 2, League 1 or and things like that. So there is a difference. And it was a big jump. Fitness-wise, I felt really good. Um, naturally, I'm fit. Like, and it's just for me, that was fine. Like, I wasn't out of my comfort zone with the fitness um, side of it. And I think that's a, a lot of the reason why the coaches liked me because I could just keep running. You know what I mean? No matter what the situation was, I could still do the same 100-meter sprint that I was mm-hmm. doing at the start. You know what I mean? Like, that was my big thing. And I try to make use of that attribute when I went into training. Um and obviously, like, you're still learning, but I had to speed up the game. Like, I couldn't hold on to the ball too long. You know what I mean? I had to move the ball quicker. Like, things like that I had to improve on because back when I was in MPL2, it was obviously a little bit slower. You know what I mean? So, like, I couldn't take that extra touch. I had to take that one touch out of my feet and play that fast because if I didn't do that, I was just going to get absolutely smashed. So, it was a, that was where the difference was and learning to become quicker and adapting to how the other boys play because – some of the boys that I was playing with last year, like, or last season, sorry, like, they're good players, you know what I mean? Like, Ben, yeah, it's just like, like Mark Milligan, just to name a couple. Like, these players aren't small-time players. Like, they've played at the highest level. They know what it takes, you know what I mean? And they're not going to take it easy on the youngster either, you know what I mean? Like, they gotta, they're helping me learn to, to become a better footballer as well. Yeah, I, what's the feeling to have these people surrounding you? For example, people like Suzaita that play in La Liga or Federici that play in Premier League and all these big people. How they impact you, the way you train, the way you play? Oh, you, I think for me, my biggest thing is going into training. I look at it as going to school. You know, I mean, you go to school to learn. Um, especially as a young player, I look at it. I'm, I'm going to learn off these players. Like these players are played at the highest level. So any bits of advice or anything I can take or I can get my hands on, I'll, I'll do that. You know what I mean? Like for me, I'm really big on learning and, and asking questions and stuff. And sometimes it does get annoying. And I know some of the boys will think this kid's annoying, but it's more because I just want to keep learning and try to take every little bit of information in to improve my game. So I think looking at those players at training was like, okay, how can I use some of their attributes in my game? You know what I mean? Yeah. And go from there. Yeah, and Loki, how is the the for example, what drives you in those moments where you were told no? Because we got a lot of kids here that during their life, people will tell them, my friend, unfortunately, we're not uh, selecting you for an MPL2, MPL1 youth or a sub team, or you know, during the process, people tell you no. But sometimes that's where we quit the we quit things and we quit the job and we quit the game and we don't want to play because one opinion, one person told us you can't play. How do you deal with that? Because you you were told no, you changed team to team, and then someone realized this guy got talent and can be part of this A League environment. So how do you go through all this no? I think as a young kid, especially like. Like, it's, it's, it's easy to get upset. Um, like, someone says no to you. It's like if you go to the shops with mum, I'm sure half of you guys have been in the shops with mum and you've asked for some lollies and she said no and you've gotten upset about it because you're like, oh, I wanted them. I think you can't get upset about them things. Um, that's just someone's opinion on you. Um, like, they can tell you all these things. They can tell you where this and that. Like, you can you, you take in the bits you want to listen to and take in the bits and just leave some of it out. That's how I de- dealt with it. Like, I took on their advice. Don't get me wrong. I, wouldn't, I wasn't just sitting there going, yep, yeah, okay, like, sure. I'll take on what they said I need to improve on or what I was lacking. And I was going, okay, well, I'll take that and work on that. But I'm not going to get upset about you telling me no because – that's not gonna. That's not gonna put me down because at the end of the day, it's my life. I choose what I'm gonna do with it. You know what I mean? Like, and that's what I try to say to everyone is, no matter how hard the situation is, if you can push through and get to where you want to be, the reward is so much sweeter in the long run. 
then just get giving it. Like if someone just gives it to you, it's it's easy. You know what I mean? I, I like a challenge. I like being set challenges. You know what I mean? Like say for instance, like say I don't make the match day squad for four weeks. I can't sit there and get upset and sulk that I'm not playing because at the end of the day, I'm just going to stay there. You know what I mean? i got to go, okay, what do I have to change to get there? You know what I mean? That's the biggest thing is going in with the attitude of how am I going to fix this? How am I going to get better from this? And how am I going to move forward with this? Instead of just sitting there and staying in the same spot you were when you got told you weren't good enough. So you want to improve on what they said. Okay. Loki, when you say um, you've been working hard, especially for the kids now, everyone, or, or as a coach, for example, we tell them, Boys, you gotta work hard if you want to achieve your dreams. Or girls, you gotta work hard, work hard. But to be practical, what would you describe? What was your hard work? How would you describe your hard work? For example, I will say, uh, I don't know. I go and run extra uh, in every training session. I stay a little bit longer. I do more training than everyone else. How do you do you describe your hard work? Well, I look at it this way. There's that many other kids out in the world when I was obviously younger. And it's the same with the boy, like boys and girls now. There's a lot of kids out there that are the same age as you training. And I just try to look at it going, okay, I need to train as much as possible to fix my game to become better so I can go further than other people. You know what I mean? I always, my biggest thing was I was always comparing myself to my best friends going, okay, how much are they working? Okay, well, if they're working this hard, I'm going to work 10 times harder than them. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you're all chasing that one thing and all the, all the kids that are coming to you for training, they're all chasing that one dream. So I look at it this way is if you really want it, you've got to work hard, like put in the extra hours of training, train by yourself, like train the morning before school. Every time you get an opportunity to touch a, touch a football, do it, you know what I mean? Like, Because every day you don't do it, that's one day you're missing out. That's one day someone else is training more than you. That's how I always looked at it. That's good. That's, that's very interesting because some of our kids, uh, they, they like, and you can see they may be talented, but sometimes they, they say, I want it. But if I have to wake up early and do a little bit of training session before going to the school, uh, maybe not too much. Or <laughs> if I have to spend a little bit more time working on my weak foot, Uh, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And they are the little different, the little details that make the difference later on. Yeah, um, I find that ac your actions speak louder than words. And you can, you put in all them actions away from training, but don't say anything. You don't have to tell anyone you're doing extra training because it doesn't matter. Your extra training will show when you go to play. So you don't have to explain to anyone going, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing that, because that's not going to get you anywhere. Your actions and how you, those extra hours of training you're putting in, they will show on the football field, trust me. You know what I mean? If you're putting in a dedicated as they'll show, you don't need to tell people you're doing this. Your, your action will, will show when you're on that field. So there's no – you just keep doing, you keep working hard in silence, and one day you'll come out on top and people go, wow, like this kid, like and I'm sure everyone that I know when I was younger would say I was not the best footballer when I was younger, not at all. And to be fair, I'm still not a good footballer. I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still trying to get better. You know what I mean? Like, it just came from me putting in extra hours of work without telling anyone. Um, and I'm sure my parents can agree with that. Like, mum and dad thought I was a nutcase. Like, I'd come home at nine o'clock at training and I'm lucky I live next door to a park and I'd go back to the park again after training and train until the lights turn out. And I couldn't even find half the soccer ball, the footballs I was kicking around. So that's the mentality I had when I was young. And not everyone's the same but everyone approaches things differently. But that's just the way I approached it when I was younger. That's fantastic. And Loki, what are you doing right now during this during this time? For example, pre-season is about to start. Uh, how do you keep yourself fit and active? Um, luckily, I'm lucky that I'm naturally fit, but I'm been doing my, my thing. Like I'm always going for runs. Like I'm always doing, I'm working on stuff that I need to improve in my game. So, My running and fitness is something I don't need to improve on, but my, my small-sided stuff, so my sharp touches, my dribbling and things like that, I know I need to improve on that, you know what I mean? With my finishing, I need to improve on that, and that's going to come with confidence, especially, like, as I said, once you score, as an attacker, once you score one goal, you score many because you've got that confidence. But it's more for me is working on the things I need to work on, like being stronger on the ball, you know what I mean? Doing little things that I know that I need to improve because... 
that's mm. what's going to carry on into the season. You know what I mean? I can't go get to training and go, okay, let's start now because it's a bit late. You know what I mean? I want to start now from when my season finished to keep going mm. into the next season knowing, okay, I've done all the work I need to do to make sure I'm improving for next season. How many times are you, like, not how many times, but you go to the nearest park and you go put your boots on, a couple of cones and a ball? Like, is it really the way that you're doing it? Going to the nearest park as everyone got the opportunity. Like, the parks are there. It's up to you if you go or not. Are you doing it right now? Yeah, so I'm, as I said, lucky that I'm back onto a park. Um, and I, my lucky, my, the lucky thing I have is I've got a younger brother who's about 19, 20 And um, that's bad. I don't remember his age. Um, <laughs> but um, he's like, me, myself and him when we were younger, we would, it was always a competition. I'm sure any brothers and siblings can say it's always a competition. Now we've become best mates. So he's at Western Sydney Wanderers in like the youth set up there. Um, and now like we're, because we're best friends, we go to the park all the time together. But it's still a bit of competition. We're always challenging each other and things like that. So I'm so lucky to have that because I think having that challenge there, it's like you want to be better than each other because you don't want to go home and go to mum and dad, oh, yeah, my bro younger brother beat me in the shooting drill today. I'm just gonna, like, I'd be annoyed, you know what I mean? So I'm lucky to have that. But also, if, even if you're by yourself, you can still go to the park and, and keep working hard, take a couple of cones down a ball, like, At the end of the day, you don't even need cones. If you can just find sticks on the floor or anything, you know what I mean? Anything that works to improve your game, then go do it, you know what I mean? Like, and if you enjoy it so much, it's not going to be a big deal because you it's not going to be like, oh, I'm going to go train again. It's like, oh, I want to go train again, you know what I mean? Exactly. That's the attitude uh, that you get to train and to play. Um, Lucky, your parents, what what was the, the role of them on, on, on all the journey? So... My parents, to be honest, were really good. Um, they never forced me to do anything. Um, they, I'm so grateful for every opportunity they've given me, driving me to training, you know what I mean? All them hours they put in, as I said, driving me to training games. Like, I remember young girls driving to Wollongong to play. Like, I was so grateful for all the hours they've put in. So, for me personally, it was like, okay, me making it, it's like, okay, I'm giving back. This is the, when I made my debut against Wanderers. For me, it wasn't just like, oh, yeah, I made my debut. Like, I'm so proud of myself. It was more, it was like, okay, this is what, this is everything. For my parents to come watch me play that game, it's like, that's what I'm giving back to them. All them hours that they sacrificed for me wasn't for nothing, you know what I mean? I put in all the hours of work, it's, it's back to them as well. So, like, I'm so grateful for them because, as I said, they never forced me. They... They gave me the step, the, the platforms um, to move forward, but it was up to me if I wanted to, if I wanted to do it, I'd have to go put in the extra work. But they would never force me to do it, so I was grateful for that because for me it made me mentally go, okay, I I want to I need to want this, not them. It's not it's not for them. It's for me as well. So it sort of worked for me as a a motivation um, to try to make it because. They sacrifice all these hours for me, driving me to training and stuff. And it's like, this is the least I can do. This is what I want to show that it wasn't just a waste of time. Yes, uh, I don't I don't blame the kids. But when we're kids, we don't realize how important they are and all the sacrifice and all the, the, the hard work that they have to do to take us to training, to take us to games, as you said. And maybe for the kids that are watching now, maybe not coming from the coach, but coming from a young player like you, how important it is to be grateful and, and say thank you and maybe help at home with a little, some some homework, some, you know, if you're going to clean maybe a little bit, if you're going to help your mom, if you're going to help your dad, that's also something that is important. Would mm -hmm. you recommend the kids to be, you know, behave like that? I think the biggest thing is, And you might not know it now as a young kid, but when you get older, your parents will always be there for you no matter what. Um, they want the best for you. So, like, you being obviously polite and stuff like that. Like, I used to ask my dad to do, help me with my maths homework, but he wasn't good at maths. So that was one thing he wasn't that good at. So I'll, I'll, I'll just let him know that. <laughs> but um, I think you've got to make sure you're so grateful for him because at the end of the day, 
they, as I said, driving in a train, they, they put in all the hours of effort for you. You know what I mean? They could have a long, hard day at work to come home to having to drive to you to training. You know what I mean? So anything possible you can do to help your parents, like it's the biggest thing. And, and, and trust me, it means the world to them, even the small things. So, yeah. That's great. And look, for the kids that, that are watching now, you are, you are um, um, a role model as a soccer player and as a person as well. And, and also there are another part, if, if, you did, if you don't make it, if the kids doesn't make it into professional football, they could be still a good doctor, they could still be a good um, dad, a good brother, a good mom, a good um, employee for a company or a big enterprise, they can build a big enterprise or a small, they can still be happy out of football and the parents going to be there, as you said. Yeah, they, they be. So That pressure shouldn't be there. They should enjoy what they do and just being kids and happy. Yeah, and at the end of the day, you young kids, you know what I mean? Like, obviously you're still at school. Trust me, once you finish school, you'll miss it because I do miss school. Um, I know you guys are like, oh, I don't like going to school, school, but you'll miss your friends um, because it's obviously life in the big world is different. Um, I had, I was working as a builder. I was working as a pool cleaner before I ended up becoming to where I am now. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't, I was doing the roughest jobs just to try to, you know, put myself out there because I never expected, when I when I finished school, I wasn't expecting my parents to give me money because at the end of the day, I'm finished. I need to do my, I need to get stuff for myself, you know what I mean? I need to work for it. So I was doing rough jobs before I made it to where I am. And I think when you're younger, it's hard to see, but once you start getting older, you start to understand that, like life revolves around other things as well. It's not just about like yourself and stuff like that. And it's hard to see that as a young kid because that's what like kids are when they're younger, you know what I mean? Like of course, yeah. it's like people are going, Oh, you've got that thing, oh how come I don't have that? It doesn't matter because once you get older it all evens out in the end, you know what I mean? You do yourself and these things are happening for a reason and that's how I always look at things. Yeah, exactly. Lucky, um, would you mind if we get some kids? To ask you some questions? Yeah, that's fine. That's good. So I will, uh, please let me know, put your hand up on the screen and I will go around and pick some players to um, ask some questions. It will be completely random. I just want to see. Um, okay. Let me check. Um, Cody, unmute yourself, please, Cody. Hi. Um... What does it feel like to be in the big stadium playing for MacArthur FC? Um, that's a good question. I'll be honest, my first game, I was very nervous. Um, obviously, because I haven't played in front of that many people before. It was more just playing in front of mum and dad and a couple of mates. Um, but going to that, I was nervous. But now um, I don't really get nervous anymore. To be honest with you, I get a lot of adrenaline, um, especially when, like, all the crowds cheering at home and stuff like that because mm -hmm. I feel adrenaline makes me work even harder. It gives me more energy. Um, and that's how I always look at it. But I sort of can block out things now. I've learned to block out if anyone's giving me negative comments. You know what I mean? I'm blocking that out. Like, I don't hear them things anymore because I'm just focused on playing the game. That's great. Thank you. Uh, Lucas uh, Pereira, can you please unmute yourself? Um... Who is your favourite player? My favourite player? This one you wouldn't know, but um, I always grew up liking Craig Johnston um, just because of his story. So he played for Liverpool as an Aussie player, but his story for me sort of helped me a lot when I was younger. Um, so he gave, he just left Newcastle. Like he wasn't even playing. He was playing local league in Newcastle and goes, all right, I'm going to go give it a crack overseas. So he went to England and went for a trial had his first trial and the coach told him, there was obviously worse words he said to him, but he told him he was, he was not good and told him to go home. So in the end, he, he ended up living in some back shed in England, um, just cleaning the players' boots and cars and stuff to make money and was just training and training and then got his opportunity and ended up making a career out of it, made it to, to Liverpool. But he told his parents that they, the coaches told him he was the best, ever, like the best player they've ever seen and which really was a lie. And then he hung up the phone because he didn't want his parents to think 
they paid all this money for him to go there because they sold it. I think they sold the house for him to go. So it was, it's an interesting story, but he's one of my favorites just because of his stories. So, yeah. Thank you, Lucky. Um, Didi. <laughs> Didi, can you go ahead? Please? Are you excited with the new MacArthur players? The new MacArthur players that we signed? Yeah. Yeah, I'm very keen. Um, the players that we signed are very good players. So they're going to help our squad a lot. So hopefully we can try to go all the way this year. Um, I feel confident that we could. Um, I think if we all perform, I reckon we'll, we'll have a really good season. Connor, can you please unmute yourself? How did it feel like when you scored your first goal? <laughs> Um, I was very excited, but we were losing at the time, so I couldn't really celebrate. So I just went and quickly grabbed the ball, ran back to halfway. Um, so, but I, I felt I felt excited, but it was just a bit frustrating with the type of game it was. So I was a bit. When you when you scored the goal, I was waiting for it. When you scored the goal, I jumped and I'm like. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! He just gone. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm I'm thankful for your support, mate. That was great. Um, <laughs> um please, um, what is it, Cameron? Cat, what's your best player you've played against? Best player I've played against. Um, I think defensively, I'd have to say Scott Jamison from Melbourne City. I feel like he's a, a very tough defender to get past. Um, you get past him, he's just going to obviously kick you. Um, but he's a, very, he's a very solid player defensively. I think attacking-wise, I do rate De Villa really highly. I know we got him this year as well, which is a positive. But I think mm -hmm. attacking-wise, he's a, he's a good player. All right, that's good. Thank you. Right. Uh, Jack. Um, what did you do to like? How did you train to step up from a uh, NPL two club to then be a professional? Um, I sort of just kept doing what I was doing before. Um, so like I was training every day. Um, when I was in NPL, even though we only trained two nights a week. Because I obviously wanted to become better and better. Um, so the moment I went into MacArthur, obviously it was a big jump. So after that first session, I was like, okay, I sort of understand what I need to know. After the second session, I was like, okay, becomes clear. And by the third session, I was like, all right, I know what I need to do to improve. I know what I need to fix. So I'll take what I've learned from those days at training bring it home and train by myself at the park to go, okay, I've got to fix this. I'm going to be quicker with this. So I think once you, you have a couple of sessions, I think you start, start to get the understanding of, all right, what I have to do to fix my game, to be, to be at that level. Thank you, Loki. Okay. Um, would you mind, we go maybe for three, four more kids and, and that's it. I don't want to yeah, take too much. Thank you. Um, Christopher. Um, so, um, hi, my name is Christopher. And when the people are chanting you, you're like, Loki, Loki, how do you feel? Um, I get goosebumps. Um, obviously, you, I guess you guys say I smile a lot um, because I just enjoy being out there. Um, I enjoy just having fun, you know what I mean? Like, away from football, I'm the same. Like, I enjoy having fun. Like, I'm a normal person like you guys, you know what I mean? Like, I enjoy... Just enjoy life in general, I suppose. So I think being out on the football field and hearing that for me, it's like, like wow, like it's it's good, it's comforting. Um, but as I said, I still enjoy talking to you guys and, and listening to your stories because everyone's got a different way of how they approach things or how they're growing up. You know what I mean? So yeah, I don't know. It's 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 good. I enjoy it a lot. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you for asking the question. That's all right. <laughs> Ryan. 
Hello, Lockie. How are you? Good, thanks. How are you? Good. Um, my question is, what as what aspect of training has helped you improve as a player? Um, personally or at team training? Uh, as an individual player. So, what aspect? I think my biggest aspect that I needed to work on, I know personally, was obviously my ball control. Um, and I, I sort of, there was one instance before, this was after my first year at Spartans, I got to go to um, Brazil to play in the Neymar Fives tournament with a couple of mates. So when I went over there, it was all that small side and stuff. So I learned that there's more to the game than meets the eye. So I feel like all that small sided games and stuff like that play a big impact. So for me, once I came back from there, I felt so much more confident on the ball because I was working on playing out in tight areas and things like that. And I got to watch Neymar and meet Neymar. And I watched him play over there and how he is in tight areas with the ball. And I'm sure you guys have watched him is ridiculous. So for me, it was like, that was an eye opener coming back going, okay, like there's other players in the world that are at this level, like, for instance, when we played Spain, like there was no chance getting the ball off them. You know what I mean? They were just moving the ball side to side. Like they were so good in tight areas. So for me, that was a big aspect. I was like, okay, I need to work on like how am I going to be better in tighter areas? And it's a bit hard doing it by yourself. So like you had to introduce it into like, say you go to the park with a few mates, like introduce it there, like work on ways to, to fix those, those things, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, all right. Thank you for answering. That's all right. Uh, hey, Mitch. What's been your biggest setback of your career? Biggest setback? I didn't really... I can't really say I had a massive setback. Um, the only setbacks I've had is when I got told I wasn't really good enough um, or when I got dropped. Um, I think they were little setbacks, but I haven't really had, or well, touch wood, haven't had any injuries like that have set me back. So it's probably one of the, like just them building up along the way. But for me, I don't really count them as setbacks. I use them as, a, as positivity moving forward. You know what I mean? I like taking them negative things and, and trying to turn it into a positive either way. You know what I mean? Like that's how I approach it. So I can't really say I've had setbacks because, I don't really look at them things as setbacks. I look at them things as, okay, this is positive because it's given me a bit more of a drive. Thanks. Uh, Lachlan, Campbell. Um, hello. Um, how do you train during like lockdown and stuff? So with us in lockdown, uh, our, our strength and conditioning coach sent out a, a program for us to do. Um, which has been quite tough, but it's good. Um, I enjoy it. I don't know why. I just, I, I enjoy going for runs as a hobby. It's it's silly, but that's just me. Um, so I, I enjoy it, but it's, I've been doing that and working on other things as well uh, by myself. So when I go back to training, I know that I'm going to be sharp and make sure I'm staying at that level because I don't want to just fall off behind and go back and I'm not ready because I'm sure with the way COVID is going at the moment, like, we'll get back and we won't have that long to train before we're straight back into the season again. All right, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Ethan? I just want to say thank you for sending that video to my mate, Liam. That's all right. You're more than welcome. <laughs> That's so good. Uh, Leonardo? What settles your nerves before a game, especially when you were younger? What set on my nerves? See, I'm a bit... A lot of boys think I'm a bit silly in the change room, which is probably true. I'm a bit... Um, I don't know. I don't get nervous, but I try, I think I overhype myself sometimes. Um, see, I'm really superstitious with what I do before a game and what music I listen to and things like that. So I'm, I've always been like that from a young kid. So it's not really settling myself. It's more... I sort of try to energise myself a bit too much sometimes. Um, and I've learned that this year. Um, I guess, as I said, every time 
you play, it's a learning curve. You know what I mean? You're always picking up things. You're never going to play the perfect game because you're obviously going to make mistakes. So I think me just trying to relax myself is the easiest part for me is depending what music I listen to. So if I listen to chilled music, obviously I'm going to be a bit more chilled out before a game. But if I listen to a bit more upbeat stuff, I'm going to be going, all right, let's get out there. Come on, let's go. So it just depends on how I approach the game, I suppose. Thank you. Some Latin music. Uh, Andy. <laughs> Andy, can Lucky you... Rose said hi. Uh, how are you training you do? Sorry? How much, how much you training you do right now? Um, so at the moment with COVID, I'm, I'm trying to train at least every day um, because back when, we're, we're, when we were in team training, we're training every day pretty much. Um, so just trying to get my body back to that level so when I go back in that I'm, I'm back at the, the level I need to be at. Um, but obviously once the season finished, I did take 10 days off um, just to refresh my body um, and, and not even just that, mentally as well. So make sure I was mentally refreshed for the next season because it is a long season in the end. Thank uh, you boy, for the um, questions. That's all right. <laughs> Boys, um, um, unfortunately, we have to we have to finish um, and, and and respect Lockton's time. Uh, thank you very much, Loki, for all your time and all this. Um, you know, um, your experience are very very important for these kids, especially at that age. And we really appreciate your time. Thank you, thank you very very much during this hard time. What we need and what the kids like you role models. To, to be in leaders and tell them that, that the dreams can come true and they just need to keep fighting for it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Lockie. Thank you, Lockie. Thank you. Thanks, Lockie. Thank you, 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 Lockie. Thank you,